Hello everyone and welcome back to Revit Beginners Pack, the essentials you need to start on a real project. Today is lesson 2 and we look at the navigation, zoom and orientation tools, the key thing you need to know to navigate your drawings and models efficiently. So to begin, let's open this example project. And the first thing to try is zooming. It's quite basic. If I go now to a more exciting view like 3D, you can see I can use my middle mouse wheel now to zoom in and out, similar to other applications that you might have used. If I want to orbit the view, I can hold out my shift key and then press my middle mouse button to orbit, just like so. Now you may notice it's orbiting around a random center point. It seems fine because that point seems to be the center point of my view. But what if I want to orbit around a certain object? Here's how to do it. Just select the object you want to be the center point of the orbit command. And then do the orbiting again. If I now move this object to the side, you can see this clearer. So that's selected there. Even if I'm orbiting from here near those trees, you can see my view is still centered around that object, and that's quite neat. Next step is see how you can rewind to a previous view. So we've been working on this view for a few seconds now, but what if I want to rewind to a previous state of the same view? I can now go to this 2D navigation wheel there, and then click on it. It's going to now attach to my mouse. And there's a rewind feature there for us to check. Just click on it, holding down your left mouse button. And now you can go back to previous states of this same view. It's quite handy to use if you have a good view, but then you lost it and wanted to have it back. So that's the navigation wheel. Another command you would use very often is zoom to fit. Let's say I'm in the model at the moment and I'm zoomed all the way in to some particular rooms in the file. But if I want to see the whole model now, I can now right click anywhere and choose zoom to fit. And there we go. It shows everything in the view for me in one simple click. Another zoom feature that may be useful is zoom to sheet size. And to show that, let's switch back quickly to our sheet. Now let's say you have this sheet nicely zoomed in and visible in the view, but you wonder how big it's going to look like when you print it to a real piece of paper. And this is a way to check out. If I now go to this zoom icon there, and then click on this little black arrow just below it, I can now choose to zoom to sheet size. And suddenly you have now on screen the sheet zoomed to the same factor that you would use and see if you print it to paper. This is quite a big sheet. Let me zoom out just so you can see the paper size. It is an A1 sheet. That's why we saw it so big just when you finish the zoom to sheet command. Let me go now to zoom to fit and we can proceed to look at orientation tools. The best way to see orientation tools is in the 3D view like this one. With orientation tools, you can choose to either view the model or slice the model. Let's go for the first one. If I now click on this view cube there on the top right corner, I can choose to either make it a perspective view, just like that, fully in perspective, or I can do that again and this time change it back to orthographic. That's easier to work with. Now, all those orientation tools that I mentioned before, they live under this region here in this menu. Let's say you want to orient this view to an elevation, like the south elevation. Just go orient to view, elevations, and then choose your view. You can see straight away the view suddenly updates in terms of orientation to show exactly what you would see in that view, but now in 3D. If I now go to the south elevation, it shows the same thing there in the same angle, but only 2D. Whereas in 3D, I can see that in the same angle and then maybe pick out an element I want to investigate. 
and then because I'm in 3D still, I can then change the view of it to look at that element more closely. Back to orientation tool now. You can also orient this view to a section and that will essentially slice the view so you can see inside the building. That's a trick that I use all the time. So let's say you, we want to orient this view to a section called building section. If I now check building section in my 2D view, it's the same angle as you can see, but because in 3D I have a lot more power to see things when they are sliced, this view is a lot more useful for me now. You can also orient the view to a work plane. Let's say I want to say orient to plane. It will show me a list now of work planes I have in the model. So if I'm picking grid line A and choose OK. I'm looking at precisely where that grid line is slicing the file. And in our case, it's way outside the building, somewhere over here. You can also orient the view to a geological direction, like north, south, east, and west. If I now go down here and choose to orient to a direction, you know the drill. You can now choose the view or the direction you want to see. Let's say I want to see this house from the west. That's what I'm getting. I can now maybe do assessment of sunlight and solar intensity on this building because I can see it now from one of the main directions the sun will come at it. You can also set for yourself a home view that will be activated whenever you go here and choose to go home. If I now want to make this perspective section as my home view, I can go down to here and do set current view as home. Click on this. Now, wherever I go, even if I disable my section box and then pan and orbit the view to another angle, as soon as I click on this home icon there, I'm taken straight back to this same orientation. Now, as you can tell already, it doesn't restore the section box state for me, but at least this gives you a good way to go back to a particular viewpoint you want to lock and come back from time to time. You can also orient the view to certain directions without having to go here and right clicking and choosing an item from this menu. You can just use this view cube itself. So if I want to now look at this building from the south, I can click on this S letter there on the compass. And here we go, looking at the building from the south. If I want to see the front of the building or the left or the right, and even the back, I can do that too. Now you may wonder what defines the front of the building. This is what it does. If I now go in here and right click, I can now set front to a particular view. In our case, let's set the front view to the west. And now whenever I click on front, I'm taken to the west view of the building as opposed to the south view like before. Another nice feature here that you can use is to save the view that you have on screen now as an independent view. Just go to the view cube again, right click and choose save view. I can now go to this one and name it West Orthogonal View. Press OK and now it's leaving there under my 3D view sections with the same name. One more thing before we finish with this view cube is that if you notice whenever I click on one of those corners of the cube it changes my view as well to show the view from that corner. There's also this animation effect whenever I change my view you see that it kind of updates slowly to show me a nice animation between my views. This can be a bit of a performance hawk on a big model. If you have in this view a thousand or a million objects, this annotation may slow down your workflow a bit. And it adds up because changing views is quite a frequently used command. 
what I would usually want to do is right click on that cube there go to options and then untick the box that says use animated transition when switching views press ok to confirm and now whenever I change my view that change happens instantly and I can save a bit of time there just by choosing that simple option now let's look at how you can change your selection color the color that you will use to note that objects is selected if I now select this topo for example it's now highlighted in red if you've been working in Revit for some time now you may notice this color isn't the default so what have I changed just go to file options to find out here I can go to the graphics tab and this is where you can change your selection color by default and maybe very likely on your system there this is a blue color but I've changed it to red because that's more contrast to me and I can see my selected items easier in my views that's how you want to change that to another color of your choice maybe orange you can do it there also the pre-selection color can be changed too it's a color that highlights an object whenever you hover on top of it with your cursor let's say I want to do it as purple just to demonstrate this point and I can now do OK you see now whenever I hover an object it highlights in that pre-selection purple color and then if I click on it it's now highlighted in orange now we can do a zoom to fit again to see the whole building by the way you don't have to go to this menu every single time if you have a middle mouse button just double click it and it will also do a zoom to fit for you here we go and there you have it just a quick lesson to show you the zoom orientation and navigation tools the next few lessons will look at actual building geometries in your model so subscribe to this channel and follow this playlist to make sure you will get those lessons as soon as they become online for now practice what you've learned today and i'll see you in the next video